Hey everyone, we're going to talk about chest tubes today and trauma can precipitate a need for a chest tube, but there are many other things. So today what we're going to talk about is um, why you would need a chest tube and then a little bit more about the care of chest tubes. So let's get started. So first year first thing we're going to talk about is a pneumothorax and a pneumothorax is basically just air that enters the pleural cavity or the pleural or pressure in that cavity causing the lungs or the lung to collapse now another um, problem is also a hemothorax and a hemothorax is just blood in the pleural space caused by trauma or it can be caused by other things, but um, the treatment for that as well is a chest tube. So you can have a hemonumo, a pneumohemo. Uh, so just be aware that there are two different things, but you can have both. So let's first talk about, well, there's two different types here. Um, you can have a closed, as you see on this side, we're going to talk about that, but first we're just going to talk about open because it's over here. And open just is air that enters um, an opening in the chest wall. And this would be someone that actually has a puncture or a skin puncture or a, say a stab wound or say they're in an MVA and they they get a puncture into their chest wall. So anything that, that is open that opens that pleural space because if you remember our pleural our lungs are are in this positive pressure there's a positive pressure cavity there and if it is disrupted then that's when you can you know you see the lung will just basically shrivel up because it's holding it there in place this pressure cavity our lung cavity and what causes this it could be like i said a stabbing it could be gunshot wound it could be trauma mva any different you know anything that causes that opening and the way <clears throat> you're going to see it called sometimes is a sucking chest wound and that is just when they when they breathe in the it kind of sucks in it's sucking air in actually and what we need to do for that is a three-sided dressing and what is that well it's just a cause and it's got tape on three sides. So you got four corners. So you leave one corner open. You don't tape it. And so that when they breathe in, yes, it kind of sucks that gauze into their chest, but it helps not bring in a bunch of extra air. It will bring in some because it's a gauze, but you don't want to bring in a bunch of extra air into the chest cavity and then when they breathe out or expire then it will release air because it's not taped and closed um, you know it's not occlusive so just remember that for your chest um, sucking chest wound and then they will need a um, once once we can get them stable and get them into the hospital they're gonna need a chest tube or if they're in the hospital once we get them stable they're gonna still need a chest tube and possibly surgery depending on the trauma all right so then let's talk about a closed this is no external wound and air just enters that pleural space because it's disrupted like we talked about from increased pressure or even a procedure we had a um, we had a patient in the hospital the other day who ended up with a chest tube they have gotten a port cath and their chest um their cavity was punctured so they ended up basically on the chest x-ray the lung looked it lo looked just like this it was you know the lung was shrunk you had all this air in the um, cavity and she had had a mastectomy so she was already in pain so she didn't really i mean she didn't really recognize the change um so she was a little short of breath and that was the thing she was having some periods of shortness of breath that was really all she experienced um, but assessment guys our assessment we would have noticed 
that there was absent breath sounds or that they were diminished or that they weren't there at all. So that's why assessment is so very important. Now, um, she ended up with a chest tube, but this was caused from a uh, procedure and it was closed. It's not like she, somebody came in and stabbed her or anything. So it was closed and um, air entered that pleural space. It disrupted. Uh, it caused that increased pressure, but it can be caused from blunt trauma as well. So think about someone in a car wreck that was crushed and the steering wheel basically was the trauma to the chest or someone got hit with a baseball bat. So blunt trauma can also cause this increase, this disruption. So what are we going to see? Well, if it's mild, and when I say mild, I have seen people with a spontaneous um, pneumo or even just a small pneumo from falling, the doctor will just watch it. Say an elderly patient, they fell at home, they had some blunt trauma to their chest, and the doctor was like, okay, it's just small, let's watch it. So what we may, so assessment again is very important. We're listening to the lungs. We're asking the patient how they're feeling. Are they having any shortness of breath? Is it increased? And we're watching this, and the doctor usually orders like a CT scan so that they can monitor this, and he may order it more frequently if they're um, just watching the pneumo and not put and not um, intervening with a chest tube. So mild to severe. So severe respiratory distress would be I can't breathe, the increased work of breathing, the retractions, the the use of accessory muscles, chest pain, dyspnea, absent breath sounds over the affected area, tachypnea, tachycardia. So remember all of these with your hemonumo open closed okay and then spontaneous that can be just a spontaneous pneumo often your patient profile for this would be a thin person and they will you know they'll often say well this wasn't my first my first pneumo i was i was um, walking in the hall um, walking in the mall one day and it, i just started having some chest pain and shortness of breath and i went to the doctor and i had a pneumo so spontaneous um, can also be a cause or a need for a chest tube, a spontaneous pneumo. And I just want to say on the hemo, you know, hemo is blood, right? So is there vascular involvement? Was there an MVA that caused some, you know, crushing to the vascular, to some arteries, vessels? Um, was there a stab wound that, that you know, went through artery vessels uh, or gunshot. So hemo is blood. Okay, just remember. Now let's talk about let's talk about a rib fracture first. I got flail chest up here, but let's talk about a rib fracture. So a rib fracture can um, damage the pleura of the lungs. And a rib fracture, while this is um, this picture is mostly of broken ribs, a fracture is just going to be you know not all the way broken. And this can be caused from many different things, from falls, car wrecks, you know, trauma, um, lots of different things. And what you're going to see is some pain, shallow respirations. They can get agnolectasis, pneumonia, because they're not taking good deep breaths. And then as far as treatment, definitely pain control. We're doing, we're teaching them to turn, cough, and deep breathe. This is with any ch any chest problem, right? They need to turn, cough, and deep breathe because we want to mobilize those secretions. We want them to take some good deep breaths. We want them to cough, and that's just so the secretions don't settle. And often we may have to give them a pillow to splint with, just so that they can get this done. Give them pain medicine. And then an incentive spirometer is a given. We want to expand those lungs to the best of their ability um, and increase it. Increase, you know, give them goals to work towards. So let's talk about a flail chest. What is a flail chest? A flail chest is when the ribs are broken and then you've got these floating, this floating segment uh, of, of ribs that can um, cause this paradoxical breathing. Um, it's usually unstable, so it, of course, usually ends up puncturing um, the, the chest cavity and disrupting that positive pressure. 
um, but usually it's several ribs that are involved and you're going to see this paradoxical breathing, increased work of breathing like we talked about, accessory muscles, the retractions possibly, increased heart rate. They could have crepitus, which is those Rice Krispies, uh, rapid shallow breathing. Uh, and you know, as you can see in this picture here, when they take a deep breath, they inspire often because of that segment that causes that um, the ribs, you know, because ribs they hold our they're part of our skeleton right so if they're broken then you might actually see this asymmetric paradoxical breathing there's some great videos on YouTube if you just um, search flail chest and you can actually get some really good visuals but what they'll do is they'll take a deep breath and they will actually have a um, inversion there and then when they breathe out they expire it will protrude so um, this can be you know this is a medical emergency it can actually cause this. It can cause the tension pneumo that we're gonna talk about next. Um, as far as what we're gonna do as nurses, of, of course we need to assess. We need to be able to visualize and, and chart and know what this is and call for a rapid or call the doctor if needed for, um, you know, for orders. We're um, airway management because again it can lead to this tension pneumo which is deviated trachea which can cause them to quit breathing uh, IV fluids pain control suction monitor level of consciousness a chest tube uh, and care of the chest tube and then diagnostics um, like I said assessment visualize visualize movement chest x-ray and ABG so yeah, these patients will need ABGs and we're going to talk a little bit more about those but you did talk about ABGs in level two and we're going to build upon that a little bit and talk about compensation partial and um, uncompensated um, partial and fully compensated you talked about uncompensated in level two but your diagnostics um, definitely chest x-ray possibly a CT scan especially if there's trauma involved because they want to see if there's any, you know, what all. They can see a little bit more with a CT scan. And then as far as your tension pneumo, let's talk about that. Like I said, this can cause a tension pneumo. Other things can cause a tension pneumo. As you can see, the there's just a lot of pressure here. Air enters and it gets trapped and it causes the lung to collapse. It cannot escape, so there's no way for it to escape. There's not an open wound for it to escape. They... Um, it can cause um, your, like I said, it can cause trachea deviation as far as your clinical manifestations, no breath sounds on the affected side, pain, shortness of breath, JVD because of that increased pressure and dyspnea, of course. And what, um, it's a definitely a medical emergency. We need to treat it with a, a needle decompression. That would be something often they do in the field and they do it in the emergency room too while they're getting the chest tube set up, but they need a chest tube but a needle decompression will give some quick relief. And um, what causes it? So like I said, a flail chest can cause it. This, you know, anything really that causes this increased pressure uh, in, in the lung. Um, open or closed chest trauma, you know, either one. As long as there's, if there's a lot of pressure there and it can't escape, then, then you could get a deviated trachea without, without treatment. A mechanical vent can cause this and that is just because if the pressures are turn, turned up on the vent then that extra pressure can cause this deviated uh, can cause this pressure and, and can cause the trachea to deviate and then a clamp chest tube or, or a block chest tube can cause this tension pneumo and um, that that patient that I was just telling you about in the hospital um, she um, you know they put in a port cath they punctured the lung cavity and she ended up with all this pressure her chest x-ray you know looked like that you had all this pressure and then a tiny little lung and uh, that's why assessment was so important with her and getting a chest tube in was her treatment that's what they did for her so let's talk about the chest tube so what exactly is a chest tube? It collects air um, from the pneumo, remember pneumo's air, and or uh, fluid, blood from the thoracic cavity. 
So you got two different types, the oasis and the ocean. And the main difference in the types is the, um, the chambers. So if you look here, this ocean means wet. So that means your, your suction control is, is powered by water and, um, and pressure. So your ocean is just a water, um, a water suction chamber. So this is your suction chamber or suction control. And then your dry or your oasis, which you're going to see mostly these. And it is controlled here. It has a suction control. <clears throat> you see this little regulator. And um, yes, you can also see these hooked up to the wall as well. There's a little spot up here, I believe, that you can connect to the wall. Wall suction. But this is your suction control and the doctor order like 20 centimeters of centimeters of suction. Um, and you would just dial this here to 20. So this is your suction control. <clears throat> now this here is, so I talked about your suction control, I talked about dry and wet, and this is your water seal. This is the one that everybody has a million questions about. So your water seal, you have a water seal on both, your wet and your dry. So water seal is on both. And your water seal is basically what it says it is. It's, it's a seal. It helps keep this system closed, okay? And if you think about it, if you've got a partially expanded lung or you've got a lung that's expanding and the doctor wants it to expand, well, you, you're going to see a little bit of bubbling in there, right? Um, as the lung expands. So you might see some bubbling initially, and then it'll subside. And if someone's had, say they've had surgery, heart, I mean lung su surgery, then yeah, you're gonna see a little bubbling there. The problem is when it bubbles vigorously, like a jacuzzi, that can mean there is some pressure, the pressure is displaced, right? Again, the same thing, you've got something wrong in this, this basically is helping this chest tube is basically helping keep that positive pressure. So if you see some vigorous bubbling, jacuzzi bubbling, that's a problem in this um, water seal. And you see this water seal is chamber C and B. It goes all the way up here, it goes there. Okay, <clears throat> so that is your water seal or your air leak chamber. And then you've got your drainage chamber over here. And your drainage chamber is where you would get, you know, whatever you're draining. If, if it's just a, a pneumo, of course, it's going to be dry, right? It, there's not going to be anything in it. If it's a hemo or there's infection or, or whatever, um, you might see some drainage, some serosanguinous or, or sanguinous. And that's about it. I hope this helped you. If you have any questions, definitely look me up. Um, my name is um, lewis.mary at spcollege.edu. Definitely reach out to me. Of course, I'm not perfect. I could have said something wrong. So please reach out to me if you have any questions, any clarifications. And just know this is more of a supplement. Uh, definitely read in your book uh, for uh, under, the chest, under the chest tube um, chapter. So I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon.